<clears throat> Good morning and welcome to the Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission's or SPC's Active Transportation Forum. I'm Leanne Cheney, a transportation planner with SPC, and I'll be facilitating today's forum. I'd like to start with a couple of housekeeping notes and point out one that the meeting is being recorded, and two, we're using a WebEx platform and I'm under an SPC account. So throughout the meeting, my username will appear as WebEx SPC1. As shown on the agenda, we'll get started with introductions. I'll call on people as they appear on my screen, and you should be able to unmute yourself and share your name and organization. <clears throat> so um, starting um, again from my screen, um, I have Joel McKay. Good morning, I'm Joel. And um, if you could share your organization, Joel, that'd be great. I'm with Booker County Planning. All right, thanks. And Dave Wright. I'm Dave Wright. I'm with Allegheny County Public Works Department and involved with the Montour and the Panhandle Trails and the Steel Valley Trail. All right, great. Kim Beaver. Hi, I'm Kim Beaver. I'm the grants manager here at SPC. Anthony Hickton. Good morning, everyone. I'm Anthony Hickton. I'm the ride sharing program manager for SPC's Commute Info program. Chris Ziegler. Hi, Chris Ziegler, um, executive director of Armstrong Trails and president of the Butler Freeport Community Trail. All right, Dave Woolwell. All right, Dave, uh, David Woolwell. Uh, good morning, sorry, I was having trouble unmuting myself. David Woolwell, Port Authority of Allegheny County, uh, Program Manager uh, for Long Range Planning. All right, great. And now let me tell you this, it's my first time hosting a, a meeting on WebEx and um, the order on my screen has rearranged. So bear with me if I uh, don't call, out, call on you or call on you twice. Um, Aaron Keppel Adams. Hi, Aaron Keppel Adams, um, water resource manager with SPC. All right, Josh Krug. Hi, Josh Krug, Indiana County Office of Planning and Development. All right, Justin Miller. Hi, hey folks, I'm Justin Miller with uh, Michael Baker International. All right, and Kelsey. All right, um, we'll move on to Lisa Brown. Hi, I'm Lisa Warder Brown. I'm the executive director of Watersheds of South Pittsburgh, which uh, stewards Sawmill Run and Streets Run watersheds. And I'm also, we're also a member of the Allegheny Green Web. Okay, great. <clears throat> uh, Laura Lynn. Yeah, hi, I'm Laura Lynn Fabian, and I'm the coordinator for the Allegheny Green Web Coalition, and we're one of the presenters today. So we're excited to be able to let you know about our coalition and give an update. All right, great, thanks. Uh, John Tora. Okay, I just got my uh, sound going, so that was just in the nick of time. I'm John. Extension and Smart Growth Partnership of Westmoreland County. Thank All right, thanks, John. Uh, Kathy Stefani. Hi, everyone. I'm Kathy Stefani with uh, Southwestern Pennsylvania Commission. All right, Rhonda Craig. Hi, everyone. My name is Rhonda Craig, and I am the outreach specialist for uh, Commute Info. All right, and we have Sydney. Sorry, I have my mute button on. Good morning again. My name is Sydney Kai Kai. I'm with Trans Systems Corporation, 
in the Pittsburgh office. All right, thanks, Sydney. Um, Todd Kravitz. Hi, Todd Kravitz. I'm the district traffic engineer with PennDOT District 11. All right, great. Thanks, Todd. Um, Mary Shaw. There it is. I'm mute. Um, hi, I'm Mary Shaw. Uh, I am with uh, the uh, Squirrel Hill Urban Coalition Bike Ped Group, CMU Bike Group, and the Furnace to Furnace Coalition. All right, great. Um, Vincent Valdez. Morning, everyone. Vincent Valdez, Executive Director here at SPC. Good to see you all. All right, Adam Mattis. Good morning. I'm Adam Mattis with DCNR's Bureau of Recreation and Conservation here in the Southwest office. All right, Elena Connor. Hi, I'm Elena Connor. I manage special projects out of the Allegheny County Health Department. Okay, great. <clears throat> um, Andy Waple. Morning, everybody. Andy Waple, um, Transportation Planning Director here at SBC. Nice to see everybody. All right, thanks, Andy. Um, Anna Tang. Hi, I'm Anna Tang. I'm the community organizer with Bike Pittsburgh. Okay, great. Um, Betsy. Hi there, Betsy, Betsy Zhang. Hi there, Betsy Zhang with McCormick Taylor. Uh, we're an engineering company. All right, Brian Watkins. Yeah, um, I'm Brian Watkins. I'm with uh, McCoskey Engineering Group. All right. Um, we have a lot of names here, and I'm thinking this could take a while on the introductions, but I'm going to keep going with this. Uh, Kathy Telly, Catherine Telly. Good morning, everyone. Catherine Telly with SBC and the Data Analyst in the Data and Modeling Group. All right. And then we have Chaz. Hey, I'm Chaz. All right, Chuck and Brogno. Hi, Chuck and Brogno, Models and Data Manager here at SPC. Corey Robinson. Uh, hi, I'm Corey Robinson. I am the Mobility Specialist for the University of Pittsburgh. Daniel Bratz. Hi, I'm Daniel Bratz. I'm an Engineering Technician with PennDOT District 11. All right, Daniel Carpenter. Hi, good morning, everyone. I'm Daniel Carpenter, and I'm Deputy Director for Westmoreland County Planning. Darren Alviano. Good morning, everyone. I am the Executive Director at the Armstrong County Planning and Development. Eric Milliron. Good morning, everyone. Eric Milliron. Uh, I am the economic development manager at Mount Lebanon Municipality. Erica Egan. Erica Egan. I'm a data and models analyst at SPC. Evan Schoss. Good morning, everyone. This is Evan Schoss, SPC transportation planner. Frank Meyer. Wasn't letting me unmute. Sorry. Good morning. This is Frank Mayer, manager of traffic engineering with Mac and Engineering. All right, great. Jason Feekston. Hi, everybody. Jason Feekston, Washington County Planning. All right, Jeff Hands. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Uh, Jeff Hands with HDR Engineering. Um, I'm the transportation program manager based here in Pittsburgh. Jeff Thompson. Hello, yes, yeah, this is Jeff Thompson. I'm an assistant district traffic engineer in charge of safety and work centers in Pendot District 11. All right, Jeremy Kelly. Hi, this is Jeremy Kelly with Green County Planning. All right, Gerald Green. Good morning, Jerry Green with uh, Steel Valley Trail Council, Great Allegheny Passage, and Northside Bike Pittsburgh Group. All right, great. Thanks, Jerry. And is your wife with you? Or are you signed in together? 
Yes, work together. All right, if you want to do her intro, that would be great. <clears throat> or she can speak in there. <clears throat> Donna Green from Walk Ride Northside and Steel Valley Trail Council. All right. All right, I'm looking over the list here. We have Kevin Conahan. <clears throat> um, Larry LaFontaine. Uh, Larry LaFontaine, Indiana County. Anything to do with bike pit? All right, great. And Lillian Gabreski. Hi, um, this is Lily. I'm the project development planner at SPC. All right. Lisa Cessna. Good morning, Lisa Cessna, uh, Director of Washington County Planning. Mavis Rainey. Good morning, everyone. Mavis Rainey with the Oakland Transportation Management Association. Michael Foote. Good morning, Michael Foote, Indiana Borough Manager. Nick Binfield. Hello, uh, my name is Nick Binfield, and I am the Community Engagement and Outreach Coordinator for Oakland Planning and Development Corporation. <clears throat> Nicole. I'm also Garner. sitting in two oh. meetings, so sorry. That's all right. Sorry, Nick. <clears throat> uh, Nicole Barnett. Uh, yes, hi, um, my name is Nicole Barnett. I am the program coordinator for the traffic safety and injury prevention programs at the Allegheny County Health Department. Richard Feeder. Uh, yes, Rich, Rich Feeder, um, University of Pittsburgh Transportation Engineering and also Squirrel Hill Ped Bike. All right, thanks, Rich. This, all give, this is also giving me practice on saying your name correctly. Sorry about that, Richard. <coughs> um, Robinson. I think Allison. Okay. All right. Um, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Allison. Uh, I just got. Okay. Am I here? Yes. Yeah, I was having problems on meeting. My name is Allison Robinson, director of. All right, and Ruth McKellen. Ruth McKellen, Penn Dot District 11. Tara Schball. All right, <clears throat> and Bill Lester. Good morning, uh, Bill Lester, Pendant District 11 Safety Section Supervisor and the District's Bike Head Coordinator. Okay, great. I think um, I got everyone there on the introductions. If I missed you and you would like to speak out now, that would be great. It's nice for us to know who all is attending and which organizations are represented. I'm Dave DeJoya with McMahon Associates, uh, Senior Project Manager and Pittsburgh Office Lead. Andrew Dash, uh, City of Pittsburgh Department of City Planning. Kelsey Ripper, Executive Director of Friends of the Riverfront. Eric Bohr with Bike Pittsburgh. I, Joy Ruff, Local Government Academy. Good morning, this is Josh Deakston from Pendot District 12. <laughs> Roy Wild, Trail Advocate, Trail Volunteer, Steel Valley Volunteer, and Trail Volunteer Fund. All right, um, hearing no further introductions, we'll move on with our first presentation, um, which we'll hear from David Totten with SPC. Also known as WebEx SPC2. Hi everybody, it's, uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, showing this off to, to this group in particular. And wow, it's, it's uh, uh, really great to see so many uh, 
so many people from from PennDOT District 11, District 12. Uh, I didn't catch if anybody from District 10 was here. Uh, well, if if not, we'll have to catch up with them later because I think you guys are especially going to find this interesting. Uh, let me see if there we are. If I can share the uh, screen for the presentation about uh, Smart Moves Connections. Our regional vision for public transit project uh, recently completed, or the uh, um, uh, at least the, uh, the the consultant phase of the project has now been completed uh, at SPC after after uh, a year and a half of work. Um, quite a few of you were on the steering committee. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sure you've seen some of this before. Uh, th those of you. Who Aren't on the steering committee. Many of you have seen this a couple of times at the TOC and the TTC and the uh, regional TDM partners meetings. And uh, but but I catch a lot of you have not seen any of this before. Uh, so that's very exciting to be able to show this off. Uh, this is a big project we've been working on for a long time at SBC, uh, ready to move it on to the next next stage. Uh, we we completed the 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 consultant project uh, and and. And I'm I'm happy to show that off uh, with funding from uh, uh, federal planning funds and also state and uh, uh, state multimodal planning funds and the uh, uh, and and local SBC funds as well. So this is uh, uh, this has really been a, a, a team project, and our, our team was really great. Um, lead lead uh, consultants were Delta Development and uh, uh, planning consultants were Evolve EA from Pittsburgh and our GIS consultants, Civic Mapper also from over there in East Liberty. And uh, uh, we used the, I, somebody here from, from Trans Systems, that's pretty cool. We use that Trans Systems for, uh, for our, uh, our, our simulation and, and data modeling. Uh, but we, we use the uh, Ohio Office of Trans Systems, uh, but we'll be showing off some of their work too. Uh, this this project started as a, as the idea of a, of a regional vision project, um, and the the idea we we've done a, a regional vision project a, a few years ago. Uh, it was it was uh, largely based out of it was about ten years ago I guess it was largely based out of out of a capital um, uh, plan approach uh, and and uh, uh, we, we we thought it was about time given that we had the new the new uh, Comprehensive plan for for the new long range plan. Sorry for for SBC uh, smart moves for a changing region had just been adopted, uh, and and was in was in the works. So how could we how could we extend the uh, the implementation of smart moves for a changing region into the multimodal realm? And what we came up with was a, was kind of a different approach from what we had done before. What we came up with was a land based approach, a land use based approach. We came up with uh, uh, looking at. Uh, um, Transit supportive land uses, and so what we've come up with is basically a map. And you can see an example. I'll zoom in on the map here on the on the banner for for our website. Uh, the it's a it's a it's a map that shows where we think multimodal improvements could be made, uh, and and what kinds of improvements would be the best ones to use in different kinds of places, based on the how it's on the transit supportive land use analysis uh, of, of how the land is being used today. So this is all based on on right now. Uh, it's not a future future map, but this shows what is going on right now and what you, and and what you could put to use today. So we think that this is a really useful uh, tool and something that uh, pretty much all of you can put into use uh, uh, right away. The, the information, these websites are uh, uh, out there in the public and available. You can use them. Um, where's the chat button? Let me just throw the up oh, everyone. And there's the uh, address you can follow along. I'm going to use a, uh, a, a story. We, we put it in the form of a story map and I'm just going to scroll through the story map. It doesn't always make the best uh, uh, presentations, it's, it's, uh, but but it, it works well better kind of as a website, but I'm just going to roll through it anyway, because that's what we've got on here. Um, but you can go to it and f the great thing about a story map is that you can go to it on your own and go through it at your own pace and there are interactive pieces that you can uh, dig into at your own pace uh, uh, later. 
so we started off with a with a, a, a regional vision that was kind of based on the the original uh, transportation network from uh, uh, 150 years ago uh, for for in, in our region uh, based around the, the county seats uh, and the and the connections that were made between them at first with horses and then later with trolleys uh, and eventually with roads. So what? But that was still based on this idea of hubs of bringing people together uh, of bringing networks together. And could we use uh, could we use hubs again uh, with, with our current system, with our current network, find find where the new hubs are. Uh, so, so that's what that's where we, we came at this from 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 what are the land uses that support multimodal investment and where are the places where we think that there are there are network hubs that could be uh, invested in. This was a multi agency project uh, and there are a lot of projects going on uh, right now in our region. Uh, this is just 1 of them. We're going to hear from port authority later in the meeting about their project, but you can see that they, they, they all kind of are working together. We were on each other's steering committees. We're still working together. Uh, 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 sharing data. We share data actively across several of these uh, in, in both directions. Uh, you can, uh, downtown mobility plan city of Pittsburgh with the. Uh, uh, Department of Mobility and Infrastructure's 2070 Vision Plan, uh, Strip District Mobility Plan. Uh, uh, Andrew is here from City Planning. The City Planning Comp Plan is just uh, really off to the races right now and doing great stuff. Uh, like I said, Port Authority's long range plan called Next Transit uh, is is uh, also doing really innovative stuff. And then we've uh, we've got this piece here that we're going to show off here today. We did uh, a lot of, uh, of of data gathering and input. Uh, we, m most of the public input pieces that we used came out of the original Smart Moves for a changing region uh, public input uh, processes. We did put out a survey. Didn't get the the best of results from the survey. Did get a few things out of it that were useful. Um, um, I I, th I think a few things out of it that were that were useful. But we also did. Uh, uh, a workshop with stakeholders. I think a lot of you were involved in that in uh, November of 2019. We did uh, a workshop with transit agencies to try to uh, to get the uh, nuts and bolts practitioners from the from the the planners and engineers from the transit agencies to see if uh, if if our concepts about uh, about multimodal hubs uh, could actually be be put into practice and built and how useful this would be to that. That worked out really well. Um, and and we'll be we'll be showing off some of the results of the of of, what, of that. But our first step was to to learn from what was going on around the country and around our region. And and our our, our dive into best practices was very helpful. Uh, I'll show off some of the examples of that we came up with that we really hit on that we thought were really useful, like uh, Alexandria, Virginia, and how they used zoning and transit oriented to create transit oriented development about their uh, commuter rail uh, metro station. We used, uh, this was very useful. This highway based BRT in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, I've got to say, I'm a, I'm, I'm a skeptic of highway based BRT, but we figured out how that, how, how. Boulder was able to make this work for them to take this investment in highway BRT and turn it into uh, something that paid off for the community with TOD. Uh, with 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 uh, with the active transportation component, with the transit, with with uh, connections, we thought that this we thought that this picture in particular would be very useful, and and how it change how this uh, uh, this BRT system changes to fit the land uses as it's it's going through. It's very different when it gets into uh, either Denver or Boulder. Some of the other examples, Kansas City, City Missouri, uh, Portland, Oregon, with the uh, the bridge that they built that was a pedestrian bike only bridge. St. Louis, the way that they they worked uh, uh, land use goals into their their uh, uh, transit uh, project. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, had had a free fare downtown program uh, that was the, the that we thought was worth looking at. A couple of policy based ideas that we thought were 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 worth uh, exploring and still are, I think, interesting ideas for our region. Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, Go Triangle. It, it sound, Go Triangle is a brand name for something uh, for transit in, in Raleigh, Durham, but really it's a multi-agency coordination and marketing effort. So there's a good example of how if, uh, if our transit agencies work together, they, 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 they could remove barriers uh, from the point of view of the, the riders and the, and the customers and the citizens uh, and, and still have their, their independent uh, uh, 
uh, control and independent uh, planning. And the same thing in San Francisco, very, very big area, a lot of agencies, uh, big city agencies, small town agencies, county agencies, but they all came together for a single fair sharing uh, system so that they could, they could remove those barriers from the customers. So those are some examples that we thought uh, as, we, as we start to implement these ideas of multimodal hubs and corridors, th things to think about. So, so to so to figure out the the transit support of land uses in our region, we used a we we used an, a cluster analysis methodology, and uh, I won't get into too much of how we did it, but it's but it's basically it's pretty cool that it's based on on aerial photography and an artificial intelligence machine learning analysis of aerial photos to figure out what's going on, not at the at the big uh, uh, you know uh, uh, trend. Tra traffic analysis zone or census tract or, or, or the usual kinds of ways, but actually at the individual parcels of land, what's actually happening there. Uh, that data came from urban footprint, and, but uh, we came up with our own analysis of that data and, and came up with six types of multimodal hubs that we think are, are around in our region. So uh, we have uh, crossroads. Uh, you know, the, the, these have a, a, a small area, a small density, but still have a, a kind of network hub of multimodal activity. These are still something that you can capitalize on, uh, and they're, they're all over the place. Commercial corridors, like uh, Route 30 corridor, that we might, we might think of uh, areas like that. Districts, this is kind of your, your meat and potatoes uh, multimodal hub, uh, a, a, a small town of a higher density uh, grid, typically have a, a grid uh, network, uh, Cannonsburg, New Kensington, Catanning. Uh, you get a lot more, more intense activity in a bigger area. You come up with a major district like the Strip District or Oakland. McKeesport's a good example of a major district. A, di a different kind of a district, though, is a county seat, and we we decided to separate those out because they, they, they operate differently. Uh, many of them have more walkability than than on other districts uh they they go back longer uh they've been around longer and they have this kind of they generate this special kind of activity as people use county seats for uh, government activities for jury duty for a courthouse for uh, uh you know bureaucracy things like that so they generate a different kind of activity so so the hubs are a, a little bit different and employment centers like south point uh large uh lower density but but larger areas uh but still a, a, a different kind of opportunity for multimodal hubs multimodal corridors then uh if you if you connect the the hubs together you can you you can find corridors between them and we use some again we use some some machine learning to find find uh corridors that maybe you might not be uh, uh might not be in existence by trying to find what are the, the the better routes between between the clusters and then overlaying some of the data that we have from spc the uh from from our street light data that shows travel patterns where are people actually moving between these clusters today uh uh what are the movements people are actually making uh and we can and we have a huge amount of data that we we're able to get because we're looking at the at such a big picture uh such a big picture scale uh so we put those together and we get kind of a network criticality analysis so what are the most critical networks in our region and this map is a, a real map uh, this is a live map on the on the uh, story map on that link that I posted in the chat uh, that you can go to and um, uh, zoom in on to 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 see the the most critical clusters according to our analysis in the region. And and so that the, and you can see you can see all the the clusters that we identified and the 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 critical corridors that connect them. So I'm not going to go through that, but that's uh, that's that's sitting right there for you to look at. So what should we be working on next now that we have this? Uh, how do we get to multimodal hubs in our region? Be, uh, our, our first stop here is, uh, uh, well, we, our first stop here was to create the story map based on the research and the data on the draft report. The draft report is still uh, we're still we're still tweaking the draft report. We're going to show it off to the commission um, coming up soon. Uh, so, so I don't have a big giant, uh, 250 pages of dead trees to hand out, uh, at, 
I, I'm unlikely to be going to the print shop to run off a thousand of these. So I'm sorry about that. If that's what you're hoping for, but I am going to run off uh, a, a PDF at some point. We, we do have it. So there is a report, uh, but what, you know, we, 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 we think we're, we, we're pretty confident in this, this research right now, though. So we, we decided to make the story map to get it out there immediately so that you can use it right now. You can use it immediately and I'll show you how to really dig into the, uh, the, the nitty gritty and the details of this data even, and you can really get into it and start putting it to use immediately. Uh, but the next step then is going to be even, uh, uh, is, is going to be to try to look at those clusters and pick out a few that we think are, are no brainers that are just jumping out at us. And I, th I think having this, having this research behind it, uh, as we start to pick out the, 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 the top 10 list or, or, or whatever we wind up putting together uh, with our steering committee again, uh, is going to, is, is going to have a lot more behind it than the usual conventional wisdom, uh, uh, you know, every everybody knows what everybody knows what's going on and what we need. Uh, instead, we'll have a little we'll have science behind it. So that that'll be pretty neat. But like like I said at the start, our 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 main output of this is a giant map. Um, so we've identified about uh, thirty six so far uh, priority clusters. Uh, that we that we picked out the 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 we looked at this and said well, okay well those are the no brainers those are the ones we want to look at uh, you can um, we picked out five of them just, I'm just I just grabbed five mostly because these five were the the easiest ones to fit into the uh, the story map not the but there's 36 of them on here and I'll show you where you can find all of our recommendations recommended sites and we're still we're and we're still considering other sites and if you have and I'll show you how you can even add your own uh, it, to your to what's most important to you, uh, so I mean our first one that we just ju grabbed to throw on here was Cranberry, a multimodal hub uh, could be could allow Cranberry to as, act as a, a hub with regional connectivity to several surrounding counties. It's right there at the corner of several counties. This is a, a really good example of what kicked us off on this project at the very beginning. It's a, a a, a network hub where th where several transportation networks come together, and yet it's not in the middle of a county. Uh, so it it really kind of cries out for a different uh, a different structural approach to how you would implement a multimodal hub here. Another example: the airport corridor. Uh, the uh, the We've already built a uh, a large capacity of transportation out there to the airport, uh, and and we've got buses running on it right now. So it wouldn't. Is, so what other improvements could you make to the to the corridor and to the hub? For example, the one here at the uh, IKEA Superstop uh, to 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 really take advantage of this. How could you how could you uh, try to get to what uh, what what they did in Boulder, Colorado? Uh, with, with the with the uh, the investments that we've already made here, we do, we we think there's an opportunity there. Greensburg, this is a a county seat hub. Uh, it's got uh, several things that you don't see in other districts or major districts, like the Amtrak station, like courthouse and government offices and and uh, government needs. Uh, and and uh, we we actually simulated this with Trans Systems Helps. Uh, to, to show how adding more multimodal features to the Amtrak station could turn it into a multimodal hub, adding a, a parking garage uh, instead of the surface parking would would let you have a staging area for Westmoreland County's buses. You could have uh, a, a paratransit access, bike share, uh, bike lanes, pedestrian access, uh, and really make the the connection to the the train station uh, into so, into something really cool. A hub that's already going on around our our neighborhood is uh, Rochester. A lot of investments been made there, including in the roundabout. And a TOD study was done there uh, a, a while back, looking at the TOD potential as a transit hub. There uh, could that be a multimodal hub that connects to some of the new industrial activity? Uh, you can we can we thought so. And out in Newcastle, a, a park and ride could, w w could be expanded to add some of the other elements. Park and rides are re really well integrated into the neighborhood. It's a really good example of a good uh, neighborhood park and ride, uh, but, but it, it could be added more, more of the multimodal elements could be added uh, from the county seat uh, uh, again uh, to, 
to add that. So we modeled these to see how they would work. Uh, we made three videos. Uh, we've got one, only one of them is in the, the story map at the moment. It's a simulation of what would happen at, in North Versailles, uh, Navy Marine Corps way, also known as the Walmart out there in North Versailles Route 30. If you added a bunch of multimodal um, uh, uh, elements from our list, for for what would be appropriate for that for for that kind of a a uh, a, a multimodal cluster you could you could activate transit oriented development you could have uh improved transit service uh and you could have things like the um you know you could have a, a bike lane a protected bike lane that we that we show uh bollard protected bike lane we show uh, um queue jumping we have transit signal priority uh, demonstrated here, uh, improved uh, uh, pedestrian crossings with pedestrian islands, uh, shorter pedestrian distances. Um, you know, we, we simulated how this would work. Uh, there's a uh, business access lane, uh, some an idea we got we got from uh, Dom's group in the tra uh, SBC operations and and traffic safety. So you can see a bus there is able to use that as a as a queue jump and get out in front of the traffic, uh, give the the people on the bus a, an advantage uh, and a speedier trip, while also allowing access to the Walmart for the cars. Um, and then over on the other other side of the street is a bus heading the other direction uh, with uh, bike share racks uh, for for bike share and uh, sh covered shelter, uh, information sign for the users. And uh, uh, you can see it has better, better, a lot better uh, uh, operations there for the uh, uh, for 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 all the multimodal elements. So thanks, Trans Systems, for those very cool movies. We 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 did three of them. We did one for for Westmoreland at um, um, the Greensburg uh, station. We did this one here at North for sales, and then we also demonstrated how shoulder running BRT could get could be done on I-376 and can, uh, with a ramp connecting it directly to the East Busway, how that could theoretically work uh, with a station improvement to the Wilkinsburg station and really get you a lot closer to that uh, example from from uh, uh, Boulder, Colorado of a highway running BRT. We've already built a, I mean, we think about it, we've already built a lot of the pieces of that. So what's this all mean to you if you've got a, a, a if, if you've got an interest in multimodal uh, hubs and multimodal corridors? Uh, well, we've got the second map. Uh, we have the second story map. That's the secret story map. This is the one for trans for for uh, for you transportation practitioners, which all of you are, uh, uh, whether you've got a big title or 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 you're just a, a somebody who, who lives in a neighborhood. You can uh, you are a transportation planner if you if you say you are. Uh, the, and this is this is the map that has uh, uh, no hand holding to it. So uh, you, if you if you get stuck, you can contact me, of course. Uh, but but this is the real stuff here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna pop this open. This is the cluster map. So here's the here's the actual smart moves connections data. And what we've got is all of the clusters in the region by cluster type. And you can zoom in anywhere in our 10 counties. We found multimodal clusters in every county in our region. We uh, we didn't find every single kind of multimodal cluster in every county, but we found something, and we found a recommended site at least at least one or two uh, in in all ten counties. Um, uh, there's Waynesburg, I mean Indiana. We found we found them all over. So let's uh, 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 and I, I put dots here on our 36 recommended sites that we're going to. Uh, Start to narrow down into our top 10 list. That's just what we're we're working from. That doesn't mean that's what uh, uh, you have to work for with uh, if you don't want to if, for what's of interest to you in your neighborhood. Um, and and I'll, I'll, I'm going to demonstrate I'm going to demonstrate this idea here for another for for all of you 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 pen dot uh, folks especially. So if you've got a, a a corridor project or a corridor plan or you're thinking about doing a corridor plan or uh, 
you, you might be thinking, okay, well, I, I need to be thinking about, about whether there should be multimodal improvements. How could that, how could, how could a multimodal investment solve my transportation problem? Uh, maybe better than a, a, a road investment could, or maybe, maybe, maybe uh, take some of those problems off the table before they, before they, before they get to that point. Uh, but, but I've got a corridor in mind that I'm interested in. Um, so, so, like, I'm just going to yell out route 8 here. So I'm, I'm interested in doing something here in, in route 8 in Butler County. Maybe uh, the zoom in on that. Oh, well, here's look at this. There's clusters in, in on route 8 that have been identified. Uh, here's a. Here's a crossroads cluster uh, in, in my study area that or not even, you know, even in an area I'm thinking about turning into a study area. Well, here you can immediately click on it, find out information about that cluster. See what it's a, you can see that it's a crossroads type cluster. Uh, and we're going to be adding more to this little box too. We're going to add, uh, uh, we've got population and employment already added. Oh, oh great. Um, uh, that was on my to do list. That's already done. Uh, so we've got in this cluster, there's a, an employment of 276 and a population of 177. Uh, we're going to add transit layers to this to be uh, as an optional layer. You can click on the recommendations and you can see that in a, in a crossroads cluster, if we were doing a transportation project in there, here are some of the multimodal elements that could make for a, a, uh, a, a good multimodal hub in a crossroads. Uh, if you've got transit service, you can you, uh, you can bring some of these multimodal hubs in there, like park and ride recommended idea for a, for a, for a crossroads hub, uh, safety improvements, ADA connections, sidewalks. Uh, those are good ideas in a in a in a uh, uh, crossroads. Optional ideas: security cameras, wayfinding, real time information, scooter or bike share. Uh, you might consider those to be optional improvements. Depends on what depends on what you're trying to do with the site. What depends on what you're trying to do with the with with the multimodal hub. So who's got a who wants to yell out there uh, a, a, a neighborhood or an area or uh, that they'd be interested in in zooming in on and, and seeing more detail. Somebody unmute and and tell me a tell me a, a place that I can zoom in on. Bellevue. What was that, Bellevue? Yes. All right, I've got Bellevue right on here. Bellevue is a commercial corridor in our in our analysis, and again, this is based on the on the actual land uses on the uh, the artificial intelligence analysis of the land use on how it's being used today. So this is not a vision for the future. Or, uh, uh, or what you want Bellevue to be, but this is what this is how it's being used right now. Um, so it's a commercial corridor. Uh, includes uh, uh, Pitts, City of Pittsburgh, Avalon Borough, Bellevue, uh, Elizabeth Avenue, uh, Municipality of Avalon. A, a pretty decent population there, and a pretty decent uh, employment. Density of population and employment are factors that go into this. So, so those are key hey, factors in trans transit. Uh, yeah, go on. Hey, question for you. So, when you say commercial corridor, uh, I'm assuming you're looking at Route 65 versus the residential street of Lincoln or California Avenue. Uh, that's probably a big factor in this, uh, and I and I don't, I don't want to speak for the robot, but uh, uh, the 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 way that the the way that the analysis works is it looks at is it actually looks at at um, um, at the way they're at the way that the the parcels are connected to each other, uh, so it so so it it's, it's kind of a holistic, uh, so so yes it includes that commercial activity and that 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 kind of industrial park action going on down by the river, uh, but it also in, but but it kind of factors that into the neighborhood, uh, so so yeah you might. Um, so there's a so so while while Bellevue does have a, a, a yeah a high density um, you know a, a neighborhood action and it also has the the that commercial corridor but but the 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 analysis saw a cluster of those things coming together but but I think if you if you click on the recommendations if you were going to do a multimodal hub there you would have you uh, you know like on Route 65 you you would want to be you would want you you would definitely want to be taking into account uh, you know, the, the these recommended elements, including transfer facility, uh, wayfinding, timetables, uh, linked branding, uh, 
connections to sidewalks and then look at these at these optional ones and see how many of the optional elements really do need to be brought in to to bring those two parts of the of the cluster together. Yeah, and if you need more de details, yeah, over here on the uh, if you click on the on the details tab, you can see you can see uh, 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 our algorithm spelled out and and get get into that if you want to about uh, how we defined each each cluster type. But, and, hey, David. Oh yeah, this is Sarah. Hi, Sarah. I, rec I recommended I, I mentioned Bellevue specifically for this reason because you know Route 65 is the kind of transit through corridor, but it doesn't actually serve the community all that well. Right. And so that's why it's sort of a conundrum as to where the most beneficial investments would be from a community standpoint. Right. I think that I th and and I actually think that makes us a fairly good example of a of 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 the the commercial corridor cluster type because it because if you're going to really make a successful uh, if you're going to make really make Route 65 into a successful multimodal corridor, you're going to have to you're going to have to bring in the elements that connect it to the neighborhood, so that the actual humans who live there can can benefit from that and and can and will 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 use it. And that's a, that I and and I I think that's where you see those those um, recommendations jump out. I think you're really going to have to, to to look at some of these optional ones and bring them in there, like bike share. Uh, like electric scooter mm -hmm. access, um, you know, transit oriented development. Uh, if you want to make something more happen along Route 65, uh, loading platforms for micro transit. Hey, David, this is Mavis again. When you're looking at Hi, the commercial corridors, are there also considerations where you have multiple transit agencies? You know, where there might be opportunities for connections there. Well, let's wander up uh, 65 a little bit farther and. Uh, uh, See what we got up here, yeah, like uh, in areas like Ambridge. Uh, we mm -hmm. put a dot on Ambridge because we think it, uh, that 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 jumped out as one of our 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 uh, uh, top spots here, uh, be, and it's right here on the border of Beaver County and Allegheny County. Uh, Port Authority and Beaver County Transit Authority operate a joint tra uh, park and ride at this at this location. Is that does is that a good start to make a multimodal hub in a commercial corridor? Uh, with, so we can click on the on 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 Ambridge now, and we get the the, the same the same uh, info that we saw before. Uh, a very pretty high population in this cl cluster. Very high employment. Uh, uh, d d very high employment, and that's where you see why why that that comes up as commercial corridor. We get the same list of recommendations uh, for commercial corridor recommendations, but then also there's a second one here because this is one of our top 36, and you can see what we wrote about this in the report. Uh, this is taken right out of the printed report. Uh, you can see that it's a it's a commercial corridor, Beaver County, and that we wrote a little paragraph about it in the report describing it as being at the edge of Beaver County, Allegheny counties. The existing park and ride in Ambridge could be the focus of an improved hub that enables transfers between BCPA and Port Authority services. Uh, in the report, we get into a little bit more about suggestions of how that could work. A lot of that is going to take policy work, uh, coordination between agencies, as well as an infrastructure investment. Uh, but but those need to go together. And if you're going to make an infrastructure investment in here, you should probably also be thinking about the the uh, Things like like sharing passengers, sharing fares, sharing uh, uh, transit data, share, sh uh, coordinating so that so that the vehicles arrive, you know, to the mi to the minute, to the second, you know, on time with each other, uh, so that so that people can make transfers, removing removing uh, those uh, barriers, making it seamless, uh, so that the, so that the, the the customers don't even know that they've done something different. Uh, th those are some of the things you're gonna have to bring to it. <clears throat> so those are some of the ideas of how we th of how we think that this could be put into use. Anybody else got any um, questions about about how about how to use the cluster map or the uh, or or the story map? You can look into that yourself, or or uh, uh, just burning to look at uh, uh, another another neighborhood. Hey Dave, if you have time, um, in the chat we did have a request to take a look at the Latrobe area. 
What turn Let's do you roll. Need? Let's see. We got Delmont. We got Latrobe. I actually like Delmont too. So Latrobe is a district that's uh, surrounded by several um, several uh, uh, crossroads. Um, this will the. Uh, it's my my next item on my to do list is to add the transit routes, the existing transit routes. But you'll, you'd see uh, the Westmoreland Transit going through here. So Latrobe, Latrobe is a, a again a, a a district. It's got a lot of density, um, um, a lot a little a little bit more of the uh, uh, of the of the population to to uh, employment. Uh, the cluster is a, a a district cluster has. Uh, uh, a larger, larger land area. It's not a commercial corridor. It has a a, uh, a ratio of population to to jobs that's that's a little bit greater. So a little bit more people than jobs. So um, uh, the, that's some of the some of the definition of 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 a district. But it, but you think of it as a as kind of a downtown or a a, a city or a small city uh, a kind kind of an area. Um, if you if if we click on recommendations for districts, uh, we recommend a lot in in districts. We think districts need, districts should have a, a a lot of investment, have a lot of elements be brought in to make a multimodal hub work, um, and and you can you can see a lot of recommended and not a lot of optionals on on those. Uh, what one thing I do want to point out uh, is, is is accessibility, ADA accessible sidewalks, crosswalks, ramps, parking. Um, also, uh, uh, you know, accessible accessible uh, transit uh, access uh, for for paratransit. Those are those are uh, accessible facilities for accessible transportation. Uh, every 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 cluster deserves that. You should have uh, any kind of a multimodal hub needs to have that as a basis. So that's there. That's for every every one of them. So we'll be, we'll be adding more to this, uh, adding more functions and features to this. Uh, add the transit layer. Uh, we're going to look into adding the, that critical net, that criti critical connections, the network criticality for the corridors. We're going to add add that to the to layer over over this, and we'll make those optional so you can click them on and off. Um, and and that'll that'll I think make this even more useful. Uh, I. I hope I hope that uh, I hope you get the point of 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 how you can put this to use in your uh, in your projects and your ideas. Maybe this uh, uh, is good for brainstorming and generating new ideas for projects. And and uh, let me, I'll just I'm gonna put this uh, this link directly into the chat also so that so you can go directly to that. Copy paste this out. Uh, we did not make we did not spring for uh, fancy. URLs um, for these, so uh, copy and paste the uh, uh, the the links, and uh, uh, we'll have Leanne uh, email them out to to for those of you who are on the phone who can't copy paste, and uh, and yeah, because we don't yeah you're not going to want to have to type all this stuff in, but uh, but but copy paste those out and and go to them and explore at your own pace, uh, uh, and let me know if you have more questions or need help. Or, or want to get on, get in on making some of the, some of these multimodal hubs come to life. All right, great. Thanks so much, Dave, for the, that presentation. Um, I think we'll go ahead and move on to the next um, pres presentation, um, which is on next transit Port Authority's long range plan. And we'll be hearing from Justin Miller and David Lowell. So I'm going to make you the presenter, Justin, if you have a, sh a screen to share. I do. And then I believe you two can. Uh... Okay. Uh, good morning. Uh, first, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Leanne and uh, the uh, committee for uh, inviting us to uh, speak to present on next transit. And uh, so, uh, 
Again, my name is uh, David Falwell. I'm the program manager for long range planning at Port Authority. And I have uh, Justin Miller, uh, who's the uh, project manager from our uh, consulting team, Michael Baker uh, International. Uh, Justin, if you want to go to the first slide. So just to uh, give you an idea of where we've been and where we're going, I don't know how many of you are familiar with the uh, next uh, transit plan. Uh, we've been uh, working on this for uh, about a year. Uh, we started out by identifying existing conditions and uh, collecting uh, background data. And then next we engaged in a very extensive program of uh, public outreach to uh, engage uh, the public, uh, uh, coordinate with uh, uh, various uh, agencies. Uh, you saw the uh, graphic that uh, Dave had uh, showing uh, other transit planning efforts uh, uh, going on, and uh, uh, we've been coordinating uh, with uh, SPC as well as uh, other uh, public entities. Uh, we've also reached out to different uh, stakeholder organizations. And then next, uh, we did a uh, travel and a market analysis to identify corridors of uh, demand. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we uh, used uh, uh, public input. And then uh, like uh, so SPC did with its uh, Smart Moves connections, we also looked at streetlight data. Uh, right now, uh, uh, we are uh, presenting our um, initial uh, sets of uh, potential uh, projects in different quarters. Uh, we've identified uh, some programs and policies. Uh, so we are uh, presenting that uh, to the public. In fact, uh, uh, we have uh, two public meetings uh, today, and Justin will provide that uh, information. Um, next, uh, we'll be uh, documenting the recommendations for prioritizing investments and uh, then uh, conclude with a final report and action plan. And uh, I just want to say that uh, we've, uh, we took a look at uh, the uh, corridors and hubs that uh, were identified in uh, Smart Moves and, connect, and compared those with uh, what we've recommended. Uh, the, we did a comparison a couple of weeks ago, and I'm pleased to say that most of the quarters that we've identified as priorities are also those that are uh, have called out in the Smart Moves connections. And uh, quite a few of the hubs, uh, such as Cranberry, that have been identified uh, are those that we've identified uh, either near the Allegheny County border or within Allegheny County. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over to uh, Justin Miller, who will uh, take it uh, from here. Thanks, Dave. And um, uh, yeah, so I think it's a testament to the power of uh, data sharing to, to show that we uh, have found some of those same conclusions and, and the scope of our project is to kind of expound upon some of those and uh, turn those into real project proposals for the next 25 years for uh, transit in Allegheny County, but that does not, it's not exclusive to Allegheny County. We're also looking at areas within a three mile buffer of Allegheny County uh, that also kind of works hand in hand with uh, some of the interagency um, partnerships that, that folks like SPC and everyone else in the region are pursuing. So. There's a lot of uh, back and forth uh, between these plans as there should be. So, um, so far, uh, in addition to the data analysis that we'll talk about uh, in just a bit, we, we've had quite a lot of uh, public involvement. So, uh, through several phases of public meetings, as well as, um, you know, a major shift in our approach, obviously due to the pandemic, uh, we had planned on being a very hands-on and, you know, being at stations and riding vehicles and kind of doing a lot of uh, interesting intercept kind of uh, discussions with folks. Um, so that that kind of went by the wayside. So we've we've went um, all in on digital as far as we can in terms of um, you know having online meetings, but also having a robust website, uh, nexttransit.network. I'll post a link, um, and you'll see it a number of times in the in the presentation here. Um, 
to not only have that online, but also allow folks to to text in to us for people who might um, you know have limited uh, internet access or ability. Uh, we even have a plain old telephone line where you can leave a voicemail um, and give us some feedback on the project. It'll transcribe it for us and include it in the record. So we're trying to be as inclusive as we can. And, and over the summer, we were able to get out to some communities through pop up tents and kind of uh, visiting uh, places where we knew people were already going to go, like grocery stores and farmers markets and uh, places like that. Um, and we hope to continue doing that in the spring as uh, as the weather breaks and hopefully some of the risk of being uh, out and among people uh, subsides somewhat. So some of the comments that we've got um, through the last part of the process were uh, really focused on developing priority connection areas. So where uh, you saw on, on Dave's map uh, in the previous presentation, those corridors and clusters, uh, we also use a lot of that data uh, as well as the, the data that went into inform that in terms of uh, you know, street light origin destinations. Uh, we also looked at um, you know, a number of data sets that I'll talk about in just a sec, but um, we, we presented that to folks um, and said, where do you really want to make connections that either you can't currently do or that you would like to make uh, better connections? Um, so we came up with these nine priority areas, which kind of um, not only go out radiating from downtown, uh, but also have kind of a circular pattern uh, around the city and around the inner ring suburbs. Uh, one of the things that we heard a lot was we need to make neighborhood to neighborhood connections, um, either make them for the first time ever or make them better where they do currently exist. Um, we heard a lot about extension or expansion of existing infrastructure, like our busways and light rail um, and, and just areas that need improved service, whether it's a, a, you know, a bus route or uh, upgrading the infrastructure that the bus route operates on today, um, helping to speed it up, helping to uh, provide better amenities for, for riders. And again, some of the improvements, like you saw Dave show um, out near North for sales, uh, would qualify as what we're calling in our plan a street upgrade. So that's that's a great visual to help tie all these efforts together. Um, so in addition to the public input that we received, and we received many thousands of uh, you know data input points uh, from folks in various forms and fashions, uh, we're also looking at uh, many thousands of data points uh, from the back end in terms of things like where are the job clusters, uh, where is their residential density. Um, but also looking at things like equity and transit propensity. So equity coming from uh, Port Authority's um, equity analysis of mobility need, uh, which takes uh, demographic factors um, that, that kind of play into Title VI requirements for um, equal opportunity, equal access um, for folks of different uh, you know, racial backgrounds and income levels. Um, where is the need greatest for providing mobility options? Our transit propensity analysis is a similar kind of analysis in that it feeds into demographics, uh, but it uses slightly different inputs to help us predict where we think um, transit would be most successful, where people would be most likely to ride it. Uh, and as you might expect, there's a great amount of overlap between those, uh, but they are they are somewhat different. Um, we also looked at where is their existing corridor capacity. So where uh, do we have transit facilities? Do we have uh, street or highway facilities that uh, could allow for growth of the system um, that with uh, the right land use uh, changes could uh, densify to the point where they can accommodate things like those hubs that you saw or um, other kinds of dense transit supportive development. Um, all of those things kind of factored in. So. You can see from that previous one, the job clusters. Now we're looking at uh, where is growth happening in Allegheny County. Um, you can obviously see along the western and northern tiers of the county, uh, but uh, among a number of pockets within the city of Pittsburgh as well. So uh, the growth is kind of spread uh, to different regions with different kinds of land uses, um, different kinds of corridors serving them. So um, finding the right um, type of uh, projects that could serve them best is is where we're going to be going next to the project. Um, so here's those um, 
uh, propensity and uh, equity areas that I just mentioned, you can see uh, the teal areas are where there's an overlap between them, but you can also see some of the places like uh, central Oakland where there may be high transit propensity, but the mobility index doesn't um, you know, meet a certain threshold or vice versa. So uh, we have to make sure that we serve all of these areas in some form. Um, here's a, a quick illustration of just some of the most uh, concentrated origin destination pairs from streetlight data. And we've condensed this down because if you saw the raw data set, it would just be a crazy spider web of lines that you wouldn't be able to make any sense of. Um, so we consolidated these trips down into big kind of chunks. Uh, so you could see what is the kind of general magnetism, so to speak, between different points of the county. You know, obviously you could see a lot of people are drawn to Robinson Township from various points. Um, same goes for a number of other places around the county. Um, we did find, um, you know, anecdotally, we know that most people take trips that are within, you know, roughly five miles of their house. That's what most people's trips are. Um, if you think of your work trip, you only do that um, every so often, but all your other trips, like to the doctor, to the, the daycare, to the store, all that kind of stuff, those count as trips too. And most people's trips are less than five miles. So um, providing intra neighborhood connections and uh, inter neighborhood connections around uh, the various communities uh, around uh, the county is very important. And the, the data bears out what people are asking for in terms of those native neighborhood to neighborhood connections. Um, so we started to take this data set as well as all the other ones that I mentioned and several more uh, into account to find those overlaps and concentrations. Uh, this is just a hand sketch of our first draft of this, and you can see the final version on our website. Um, it lo kind of looks a bit like a flower, I suppose, but um, the, the petals are important because they, they link um, parts of the region together, but also this circle part, the center part, uh, helps us to indicate that we need circulation around the core, not just to it. So um, that's really where we, we ended up with some of that, and that's, of course, a very fast high-level look at it, but to talk about the programs and policies, um, you know, there are a number that are important. And I'm just going to bring them up on the screen here and you can see them all on our, um, on our website and through the survey uh, that, that is open now and will be open through the remainder of March and into, uh, I think, the first week of April. Um, folks have told us about a number of things that they want to see happen uh, in the transit system from um, you know, bread and butter stuff like sidewalks. How do I get to the stop safely? Um, that is, you know, everybody's first and last interaction with transit is actually walking to it. And even if, even if you're at a parking ride, you have to get out of your car and walk to the stop. So uh, everybody everybody is a pedestrian at some point, uh, whether you're walking or rolling or, or whatever it is you may be doing. Um, and also to help get you there, uh, folks are interested in things like more consistent. Um, and just available wayfinding and signage to help navigate to transit and to announce publicly, hey, transit is here. <laughs> you know, it's it needs to be more visible. Um, you know, other things around like ve vehicle electrification and helping to uh, clear the air, so to speak, and uh, quiet down some of the rumbling diesel buses, um, even though they're much more efficient, uh, you know, in recent years than they have ever been. Um, there's still a strong, still a strong push for uh, greener uh, fuels for buses, uh, and that's a worldwide trend. Um, things like looking at a bus network redesign, um, you know, every so often eight transit agencies do this where they take a look at their their overall route structure and recommend some changes. Some agencies uh, tweak and some agencies wipe the slate clean and start over. We don't have a recommendation as to which of those <laughs> Port Authority should do just yet, but uh, we do know that there are some areas that are not adequately being served based on what people have told us and what the data suggests. So um, some level of redesign is is likely in order, and we want to hear from folks about that. So that's definitely one that if you're interested in, um, you should you should weigh in on. Um, so a couple to really focus on um, that I think are most relevant to this group, certainly not the only ones, but uh, a sidewalk program um, at a high level to summarize, uh, like I said, how critical uh, sidewalks are to transit. Um, one of the ideas is could Port Authority partner with municipalities um, to help construct sidewalks 
in, in areas that have a critical need uh, that serve frequent routes that serve uh, places um, of high transit propensity or high equity need um, to, to work with municipalities to uh, get those things constructed uh, in a timely and efficient way because you know doing little things piecemeal is not only inefficient but it, it ends up being more expensive per linear foot of sidewalk than if you kind of take a larger walk shed area and look at it um, you know full scale to say what is the five or ten minute walk shed to this stop um, you know based on a number of factors whether it's usage um, equity etc and let's get it done so um, Port Authority obviously realizes that it's a matter of you know safety and dignity to their riders but also to encourage ridership too I mean there may be many people who um, have options and maybe choose not to use transit because they just don't feel that like it's safe um, or easy to walk to their stop. Uh, and obviously wayfinding and signage plays into that in, in a number of ways. Um, not only signage out in the in the wild um, that is helpful, um, but also just consistent signage so that everything you know looks like a system. And uh, you know, whether you're looking at a sign in front of your face out on the street or you're looking at an app on your phone, everything is consistent and easy to use. And that plays into ADA system access as well. Not only the um, sidewalk network, but also the st stops and stations themselves um, as part of an overall uh, look at um, particularly legacy stations that that may not be ADA accessible now. Uh, you know, how can we prioritize that to ensure that the at least the rapid network is 100% ADA accessible uh, going forward, and then looking at stops as they're prioritized and and refurbished. To better improve ADA accessibility for those uh, places to ensure there's a, a landing place for a ramp, uh, there's adequate clearance for um, for all the users to navigate that space. And Port Authority has already um, taken a look at some of those things, and so what we're really recommending is is how to prioritize that and and turn it into a capital program. That's really what the long range plan is all about. Um, speaking of capital programs, here is. Um, look at some potential project corridors and I say that because we haven't um, really focused on mode at all yet and that's very deliberate because we want to make sure that we're connecting the right places and at the right scale um, we can talk about mode going forward because we are going to need to prioritize these things and and talk about ridership and cost and and those more nitty-gritty elements but um, at a high level we want to make sure that we have the right connection so the, the colors on the map are, are there to help guide you in terms of, um, you know, what, to, what some of these things could mean, but the lines are more important than the distinctions between them. Um, but just to reference the teal lines, and you can take a look at this map in more detail and at your leisure on our website, but at, at a really quick glance here, the, the teal lines are looking at high capacity transit where we need to move a lot of people over longer distances, perhaps with um, fewer intermediate uh, stops. But the key is that they're connecting these dots here, uh, these hubs, um, and you may notice we have quite a few of them proposed around uh, the county and each of those is, is simply a place where um, transit resources come together in some form um, as to the type of hub and what could be happening at them, those are yet to be determined. And of course, we continue to work with SPC on, on refining these and, and you know, talking about what they could be. Um, the purple dash lines, the dash dot line is uh, what we're calling street upgrades. And that might include things like what you saw in Dave's presentation around adding uh, queue jumps for buses, better stations, other amenities, transit signal priority, um, you know, upgraded stops and stations that um, also kind of interface with other modes, uh, you know, having bike racks and having other kinds of things at them to make them more multimodal. Um, think of, you know, what Port Authority is doing now with the downtown Oakland East End BRT project that is in final design. Um, that's a major street upgrade project for sure. Um, so not everything would come to that level necessarily, but 
the idea is that these purple lines are a kit of parts that we know we need to tr prioritize transit and make it move better on major corridors. Uh, and the, the dotted orange lines are a little bit more nebulous. Those are places where we know we need to make new neighbor connections between places, but we haven't really determined a path or a mode or really how that how that could look yet. We just know that they're important uh, connections to make because mainly they're not being made today. Um, so more discussion is needed on those. We also have community circulation areas. They're a little faint on this map and apologies if you can't see them, but um, you know, for instance, around the airport, we're calling community circulation area because it's a widely dispersed um, set of you know jobs and homes and things like that, where there are concentrated hubs, places like the airport or Robinson, but uh, getting people that first and last mile is is a different kind of challenge. Um, so the you know the technology for how we and the vehicle for how we accomplish that circulation. We still need to work through the technology is moving rapidly. Um, so we're a little bit less prescriptive about that, but we know that those connections should be made and whether it's through a port authority type service or a partnership with with uh, another agency, obviously ACTA is doing great things out near the airport. Um, something like that. Um, so there are a lot of different options, but we know that given those conditions, those are going to be important. And as I said, the, the hubs, you can see the dots scattered. Uh, throughout, and then we also have a category called topography connector uh, with a few proposals there where we have, um, you know, a pretty big vertical challenge uh, to connect 2 places that are pretty close to each other. Obviously, think of the inclines. Uh, we already we've been doing topography connectors for, you know, 100 something years in Pittsburgh. Um, but could we do that uh, in another form, whether it's an incline or uh, a gondola or an elevator there? Yes, there are public transit elevators that exist in the world. Uh, or you would swipe your connect card or similar um, to use an elevator uh, to you know traverse. You can imagine the, the hundreds of feet of cliffside that we have in some cases. So um, it's it's a pretty diverse set of potential projects in these corridors. Um, so this is a little bit. Uh, I realize I just <laughs> I just talked through these, um, but you know the idea is that we have these diverse set of uh, project types, and you can uh, again read about those on our website and educate uh, yourself to your heart's content and uh, hopefully please take the, the survey as well um, to give us your input on some of these. Um, so what does it mean for active transportation? Um, we, we want to make sure that we can uh, ensure connectivity to nearby trails or trailheads um, with these various hubs um, and corridors that we're proposing. Uh, there's always the possibility for parallel paths or trails with any kind of proposed transit corridor, uh, whether it's uh, on street uh, bike lanes where uh, conditions uh, permit, um, whether if it's new high capacity transit, uh, does the right of way exist to do something like that? All of those things would need to be determined down the road when each of these projects kind of comes to its own alternatives analysis uh, for, for design. But uh, there are things that we want to be cognizant of so that those should always be in the conversation um, to look for active mobility infrastructure anytime Port Authority is going to undertake one of these projects in the future. Um, you know, ensuring that there are amenities at stops or stations to allow for, you know, good pedestrian circulation, um, you know, whether it's bike or scooter share or some other kind of multimodal thing. Again, like I mentioned with wayfinding and, and sidewalks as well, all of those things really integrate together. Yeah. Hey, Justin. Oh, yep. I'm sorry. A question for you. So, um, would there be an opportunity for the Port Authority to work with DOMI and city planning and partners when there's private development that occurs and there's discussions and encouragement about TDM programming, uh, certainly encouraging uh, transit accommodations, biking, um, uh, on demand services being incorporated into the development? Would the Port Authority be, be willing to be part of those conversations and planning efforts? Dave, I'll let you handle that. <laughs> uh, yes, and, and, and in uh, fact, in this uh, process, uh, uh, we are also coordinating with uh, both city planning and the Department of Mobility and in Infrastructure. Um, you know, we've had some you know very high level discussions on the types of uh, uh, things that uh, you raised, but once. Uh, you know, once we get uh, beyond the plan uh, uh, and get into specific projects, 
that we'll have those discussions in uh, greater detail. Thanks, Mavis. And thanks, Dave. Um, so, yeah, I think um, just kind of concluding here, and we can turn it back over for more questions. You know, how can we connect to active mobility resources like trails that we already have? I just kind of doodled a few on the screen here while we were going here. Um, but, you know, obviously there's many, many more resources. And I think you're about to hear about a lot more of that from Laura Lynn as we, as we pass the ball over. But, um, you know, ensuring that we are um, always considering all modes when we're talking about this, uh, this transit stuff here. It's not just about moving buses and trains, um, you know, because these systems are nothing without uh, getting people to them safely and providing those, those options. So uh, we want to be an active uh, participant as, as much as we can with all of your groups and ensuring that, um, you know, our proposals are looking at um, active mobility in the best and safest way possible. So, um, with that, I'm going to, I'm going to make some plugs here for our process. So, um, we missed the February 25th meetings. Those have already happened last week, but lucky, lucky you, uh, there are more meetings today. And if you are available and interested, um, we'd love to have you. Uh, there's a meeting coming up very soon in 10 minutes. It's going to be starting, but, uh, obviously that may be a little bit too soon. So we also have 1 this evening. Um, and you, you can join in a number of ways that you can see on the screen here. Um, next transit dot network uh, is where you will find all of the information for registering for that as well as giving us your input. We have, um, a admittedly lengthy survey up. Um, it's kind of lengthy because. In a way, it needs to be to capture the amount of detail that we're looking for. Um, from the various uh, corners of Allegheny County, uh, as well as kind of countywide policies and programs. Uh, we want to make sure we're. We're thorough about that. And also, just to wrap up here, if you have your own organizational meetings, we'd love to show up and um, and give our spiel and and get folks in, you know involved and excited about next transit, um, and making sure that we are getting uh, diverse uh, voices and representation, and um, you know just making sure that this process is as inclusive as possible. So you can see um, we have. Uh, I will copy this into the chat. Uh, Janae Smith is our. Uh, outreach uh, deputy project manager for the project, um, and she is helping us to coordinate all of these various meetings. So, if you have a you know community group or your organization um, could slot in some time for next transit on the on your next agenda, we'd love to be there. So, with that, yeah, and uh, I just want to add a, a couple quick points. Though so we've been talking about a long range plan, just want to make the uh, group aware of a couple of things that are already going on. Um, in the previous presentation, uh, uh, Dave ha had a rendering of a transit center that is based on a transit center, which is currently under development in McKeesport. Um, we are in a phase two uh, modernization of that. And uh, that's of interest to this group because it's also very near the Great Allegheny Passage and one of the elements of that project is wayfinding to link the uh, path between the trail and the uh, transportation center. Uh, the other element I want to mention is some of you may be aware that we already have two electric buses, which are currently in operation and another six are scheduled for delivery towards the end of this year. And then as part of the bus rapid transit project, um, 15 more are scheduled uh, to be uh, uh, procured uh, for uh, operation of that service, and uh, we have funding through which we worked with the uh, Allegheny County uh, Health Department. Uh, they actually applied on our behalf uh, for uh, seven of those electric buses, and that was awarded through an uh, EPA grant. I see it looks like uh, the questions in the chat are caught up. Uh, thank you, Dave. For responding, if anybody has any follow ups to those or other questions, we'd also be happy to. To talk about that. Yeah, please take the surveys if you're not able to attend uh, the uh, meetings being held today. All right, great. Thanks so much, uh, David and Justin for presenting. Um, not hearing any questions at this point, we'll move on to our next presenter, um, which is Laura Lynn Fabian, who will be giving us an update 
on um, at the Allegheny Greenwood. Thank you. Oh, you moved the little ball for me. Great. <laughs> I don't have to do it. Good, good. All right. I'm going to share my screen. All right, everyone can see that okay? Okay. All right, well, hi everyone. Um, as Leanne mentioned, I'm Laura Lynn Fabian and I am the coordinator for the Allegheny Green Web. And I'm gonna take about 10 minutes or less to share with you an overview and update on our initiative. We actually came in all the way back in 2018 and had the opportunity to talk about the Green Web. So this should hopefully be an update for folks who might have been there several years ago. And the Green Web really relates to increasing mobility options, but as it's, it also relates to outdoor recreation options and land conservation and restoration as well, tying those uh, several initiatives together. So I look forward to answering any questions you might have at the end. So the Allegheny Green Web Coalition, we are a coalition of 30 nonprofit partners and government advisory members, including Allegheny County, who have united under a shared vision to see all communities within the county become more livable and healthy and prosperous and environmentally sound through an interconnected public trail and green space system. So the coalition is aiming to connect the nine county parks and municipal parks and conservation lands with each other and to neighboring communities through four activities. So we say organizing and planning and advocacy and storytelling. And the coalition has conducted a lot of mapping analysis today alongside our planning consultants, environmental planning and design to develop a draft vision map that proposes a living strategy for public green space connectivity across Allegheny County. So that's the map that we have here on screen that we're sharing. And this map, it conveys a lot of information in one map. It displays existing and planned trails, greenways, and open space, as well as newly proposed conceptual corridors to fill gaps. And so it's really important to note that this map is a work in progress as opposed to it being a final plan of any sort. And we have been in the process of going out and gaining input from the different municipalities across Allegheny County into this map. Uh, we also have this more detailed version of our vision map that has conceptual local corridors turned on as well. This has them kind of pretty light, but we just wanted to kind of ease into this because it's a lot of connections. This one that I just turned on has them a little bit darker. So you can still see the hierarchy between regional connections versus more local. Um, so the proposed conceptual trail and greenway corridors in the vision map that would fill gaps would contribute many benefits, such as ecological preservation and active transportation and recreation, as well as heritage preservation, environmental restoration, and the mitigation of landslides and flooding, which is really important for this region, of course. And in drafting this vision map, the Green Web also focused on connecting places to parks and open space and trails that don't currently have sufficient green space access. So that would include the Allegheny County Health Department designated environmental justice communities, which you can see on the map um, highlighted in the beigey brown, mostly following the, the three rivers there. But we also had EPD run unique analysis looking at communities that have physical barriers to connecting to green space across the county as well. Um, we also have this complementing concept diagram that helps to conf uh, helps to convey the three groups of regional connections within the vision map that are equitably distributed across the county. You can find this diagram as well as all of our other maps, just FYI, on our website. And I'll touch on our website uh, before I close out here. 
So Allegheny County is an advisory member in the coalition, and this mapping essentially builds off of the current county comprehensive plan called Allegheny Places and further builds on it as well. In particular, looking at the um, parks, open space, and greenways component, as well as active Allegheny. And it's possible that this work could eventually benefit a county comprehensive plan update or perhaps the creation of an implementation plan one day. Um, but either way, the coalition does hope that the vision map will eventually influence the update or creation of an official government plan. And furthermore, that it would have a complementing funding strategy in place to help to implement it. So our 30 plus partners and advisory members support this draft vision map, and we have been taking it to the municipalities, as I mentioned, and their council of governments across the county, really to accomplish three goals. We've been looking to receive their review and input into the vision. And we've also, though, been wanting to discuss their barriers to developing and maintaining connections and also share the ways in which our partners and our advisors could help them with implementation projects. Um, so now in 2021, so that was last year that we did um, these planning workshops with the COG and moving forward into 2021, we want to take a bit more of a less formal, more casual approach, especially with the pandemic and things going virtual. So we plan to keep municipalities engaged in the green web and also hopefully engage new municipalities through what we're calling our Allegheny County Trail Talk Initiative, which will be casual forums for discussing and collaborating around green space connectivity amongst the municipalities and our partners and our advisors. So the goal then really over time, we want to emphasize is that the green web um, will remain focused on those four activities that I mentioned of organizing and planning and advocacy and storytelling, whereas our partners and advisory members of the coalition will be the ones to work collaboratively alongside municipalities, consultants, and other stakeholders as well to implement connection projects and programs that are aligned with this vision. And lastly, um, I mentioned that we have just launched a website for the Allegheny Green Web, which you can find at AlleghenyGreenWeb.com. And we encourage you to check it out if you're interested in learning more about our coalition. And if you are a relevant nonprofit or government organization or municipal staff member or official in Allegheny County, we welcome you to get involved in our coalition. Um, you can learn more about how to get involved at our website or by reaching out to me directly. And I can put my contact information in the chat. So yeah, that's about it. Thank you very much for your time and for allowing us to come in and give our overview and update on the green web. And if there are any questions, I'm, I'm happy to, to take those now. All right. Um, thanks very much, Laura Lynn. It's always great to hear an update, especially when we've uh, been introduced to a project in the past and to see the progress that's been made. Um, does anyone have any questions for Laura Lynn at this time? All right, hearing done, um, we'll go ahead and move into the last session of the meeting, which is the roundtable updates. And um, I'll start off. I'll start off sharing um, a couple activities that I'm planning on as we move into 2021, and that's gearing up for bike counting for this year. Just like to remind people that if you have a trail or a bike lane or a bike route in your community that you have not collected bike counts on, and you're, you're interested in that, send me an email and let me know. We'll see if we can work that into the count schedule. And then also, as you may recall, last spring we had planned to host a bicycle friendly community workshop to provide resources and assistance um, to communities interested in applying for that designation. That was postponed due to COVID 19. And um, so we're now ready to launch that. And uh, you'll be hearing something in the next week or so about when that. Um, workshop will be held. Um, so that's it for my updates. Um, anyone else um, in the forum, if you'd like to share, um, feel free to go ahead and speak out. Um, hi, this is Lisa Werner-Brown from Watersheds of South Pittsburgh. Um, 
as I said before, we do work on Sawmill Run, our, is our one of our major focuses. And um, as probably most of you know, in 1910, Frederick Law Olmsted Jr. did a study on transportation for the city, the, the Civic Commission of the city of Pittsburgh. And in that study, he his vision for Sawmill Run was to create a linear park to keep it green space because of the issues with um, flooding in particular, but because it was actually really a beautiful setting. And when I became executive director of the Watershed Association, I we kind of grabbed that vision and we're trying to move forward with that. We are working to create more green space along Sawmill Run to help prevent flooding, but also to have amenities for the stream, because actually anyone who's been down on the stream would be quite surprised how beautiful it is. So we to do a master plan for a green boulevard for Sawmill Run, and we are now forming our advisory committee. So anyone who is interested in reaching out to me, I'll put my and would like to be involved in for Sawmill Run. I there. All right, thanks for sharing, Lisa. I'm um, cutting off the whole bit at the end there. But if you want to just throw your contact information in the chat box, that would be great. Anybody um, have any questions on that? All right, anyone else got an update they'd like to share? All right, hearing none. That will conclude um, today's forum, and I hope that you all have a great day. Thank you. Hey, uh, Leanne. Yeah. I do have. Um, I tried to put in a press release that we've got a webinar coming up that's moved from um, February to March 31st on COVID-19. Uh, webinar to focus on impacts of COVID-19 on the big, big box retailers. Um, we have a speaker coming in from the Midwest part of the country, Adam Cook, from the Principal Urbanist Seamless, from an organization called Principal Urbanist Seamless Collaborative, and he's looking at reuse of big box centers and malls. In some ways, does relate to transportation issues, so you might want to take a look at that. I'm going to try and put the, a better link in here. Um, it wasn't able to put the full press release in, that's why that message is choppy. But just wanted to um, give you that. Answer. All right, thanks, John. Hey, Leah. Yes. This is Dominic D'Andrea. I have just a couple of items, if you wouldn't mind. Um, just a, a reminder to folks that maybe you don't know, uh, we're working on a Broadhead Road, a corridor planning study, our public meeting, you know, one of our, our first public meeting is tonight, it's a virtual meeting. I've put the link in the chat box um, for, for those uh, of you that are from Beaver County that are interested in, in that study. It's Broadhead Road, basically between the five points intersection all the way to the Beaver Mall. So it's pretty much uh, through Beaver County, through places like Center Township, Aliquippa, um, and so forth. So that public meeting is tonight. And the other thing I wanted to mention was just a shout out, a thank you to those. Uh, we uh, sent out an email that talked about uh, near miss intersections. Uh, we just want to thank those that responded. Uh, PennDOT's doing a study uh, to look at intersections where there may be a lot of near misses. So those are intersections that would not normally be in the data bank as an, you know, as a crash or an accident. And uh, we, we received um, 30 emails with uh, close to 65 intersections. So those were all submitted to the consultant that's working for PennDOT Central Office. So just a thank you for those that provided feedback on that. 
Great. Thanks for that update, Don. Um, I guess I was in a, a kind of a rush there to end the meeting. Would anyone else like to share an update? I'll give a little more time, uh, give people time to get unmuted and uh, share anything you'd like to share. Hi, Leanne. This is this is Daniel. Um, I posted a link in the chat um, box there. Just want to let everybody know that the project for public spaces they are reconvening their annual conference. It was canceled last year, um, so their walk bike places conference will be. Um, it, it is being planned and to be hosted in person and online. Um, it's uh, June fifteenth through the eighteenth, and I put a link in the chat box. And then also. Um, our county parks department is completing a middle gap uh, feasibility study for the Westmoreland Heritage Trail, I'm looking to make the connection from from Delmont to Export. All right, great. Thanks for that update, Daniel. I'll, I'll awesome. go. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, mine actually goes really well with the last one. So um, we friends is partnering friends of the riverfront is partnering with the county and SPC and PennDOT to do a feasibility study in the Turtle Creek um, Valley to connect the Westmoreland Heritage Trail to the gap from Trafford to Rankin. And so there's going to be um, a public meeting coming up in the spring. The date isn't set yet, um, but I'll drop a link into the chat for the website so you can keep an eye out um, for when that's going to happen. Thanks. I guess I'll go. Um, we're moving along uh, or humming or humming along with the city and our move forward PGH program. And we're trying out some new tactics for outreach in terms of um, putting together clusters of projects, like a grouping of projects um, all at once. Um, and the East End Shadyside South Shadyside Squirrel Hill Network uh, just had its first public meeting. We had over 200 attendees. Um, it was pretty great. And then we have a North Side cluster coming up. Um, you can, there's a whole bunch of meetings coming up. I'm not going to list them all. So you can just go to the moveforwardpgh.org and see them all. I'm pretty excited about a lot of these projects. But, so check it out. <clears throat> Thanks, sir. All right. Hey, Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> and this fine. is Jason Sakes in Washington County Planning. Um, just wanted to let you guys know we're we're just uh, just had our kickoff for our comp plan update, which will include our greenways plan, um, an update to that as well. So we're we're looking to move forward on that here in the next few months to uh, a year. That's great to hear. <clears throat> just uh, one quick one from from uh, the uh, PEC side of the world. Uh, we released a uh, an, an update to a spring report that. Um, measured and, and mapped some of the uh, COVID impacts to trail use specifically, and I will put uh, the link to that report in the chat. All right, great. All right, any other updates? All right, hearing none, I think we'll go ahead and conclude the meeting now. And uh, I hate to appear to be in such a hurry, um, but I am virtually attending the National Bike Summit and I'm looking forward to a 12 o'clock uh, fireside chat <clears throat> as part of that summit. I think maybe that's why I was a little antsy. <clears throat> but at any rate, we'll do one last call for updates. updates. All right, hearing none, this really does conclude today's meeting, today's forum. Uh, thanks to all the presenters and to all of you for attending, and I wish everyone a great day. Thanks. Thanks, Leanne. Sure.